Pencil Lovers, Mark here from Whole Lot They Love. Nick is with me. Nick, we're going to mm -hmm. start up a Gaja Anima. We're going to make you some coffee, a milk drink, and right. show you how easy this guy is to use, right? We're going to take mm -hmm. a brand new one straight from the box and show you how to get it set up. Right. So, and this is the base model Anima. Gaja is tricking us a little bit. They have a picture of the Prestige on here. So, if you get one at home that looks like this, Always check the label, that'll tell you what machine's in the box. So let's get this out. I mean, we'll, we'll pop it down onto the floor real quick, huh? Mm hmm But real simple. We'll take that one take out. that right off. How about I do the heavy lifting for you, since oh, you're going to do most of our... appreciate that. It's actually not all that heavy. Yeah, really, just great machine in general. Really compact and narrow, too. Easy to get out of the box. We've just got a little bit of tape that we want to remove here. So first on our brew spouts. And then up here on the lids for our water reservoir and our bean hopper. Get that off of there. Get that off, and then uh, that's all the tape that we have to worry about. <laughs> we'll talk all about that. So you want to hand me the power cord? I'll get that plugged in. Give the power in. cord, and then I'll cover what else is here in this mm -hmm. uh, top of the packaging. So just a couple of things. We've got our user manual. But you're watching this video, so you won't necessarily need that. That's but right. <laughs> good to have on hand. We also have a library of support videos, some of which I'm in, that talk about how to get these machines set up as well. So you can always refer back to this stream or one of those. And I'll mention we do have Brian back there running the show. And if you have questions at all about this machine, uh, you can chat those in, and Brian will get them on to us. We'll cover those at the end. That's right. Get some time. This is our drip tray cover. So you can see there is a coating on here. This is a protective film called laser film. Um, maybe in a couple of years, these will be the new colors and you'll choose to just leave that on. But if you peel that off, there is a nice polished steel underneath. It's just to protect the tray from scratching uh, during shipping. So we'll put that on. And then included with the machine are just some basic accessories. This first one I'm gonna use right away. This is our coffee uh, scoop as well as our grinder adjustment. So let's just do that, get that right yeah. out of the way. This is gonna be the first thing I'm gonna have you do. We're gonna move the machine. And then right in the top inside our bean hopper here, there's that yellow post that sticks up. And there's a little tab that indicates which setting we're on. There are five little dots there. We're just gonna to wanna to insert our key in. It's a hexagon and then it twists kind of like a medicine bottle. So you go down and we're gonna turn it as far as it goes counterclockwise to that finest grind setting. That's gonna ensure Stronger coffee off the bat, and then it's very easy to just ease back that grind. We have a cleaning brush. This is for things like your brew group when you get inside to do a little bit of maintenance. A brew group lubricant tube. And then our water hardness test strip. Mm -hmm. So we'll open this up because that's going to be something that we're going to want to get sorted out right away. And we do, now I put the power cord in the back. There is also a power switch on the back here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to Turn that on, we'll get some water in here in just a moment and show you how to use that test strip. That's right. And if you want, Mark, I can yeah. take the reservoir, go yeah. rinse this, fill it up for a sec for you. Sure. Perfect. So always a good idea to rinse out your reservoir. Um, we'll talk about, now this machine does not come with a water filter. You can use one. Um, it's gonna be the Mavia Intenza water filter. It looks like this right here, there's the box. Um, if you use a water filter, that's what it looks like out of the box. If you use a water filter, you will extend the time between the scaling uh, of this machine. Um, also, you get out any chlorination in your water. Yep. Create uh, space here. There, there, you go. Go. there we go. There we go. All right. And if you were going to use a water filter, I do suggest it for dechlorination and to extend That's right. the scaling. Um, it's just to take this water filter, you hold it like in a in a thing of water, do some right, squeezing, squeeze all the air out, and then it just mounts in right. It just pops right down in there. It'll be yeah. very obvious oh, how that works. Pull that right back out again. So you have your water yeah. inlet, which is located right, right there. So just like that. And it fits right over. There's a gasket that creates a little seal. Yeah. Um, when you get your water hardness results too, you'll use those to actually set the filter cartridge. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is if you choose to, you can use one of our BWT pitchers instead. And that'll take care of things like uh, impurities in the water. It'll soften it and then uh, you can use that when you're programming. So let's go ahead and wake the anima up here and go through our initial setup. So first thing it's gonna ask us is just to prime the machine. That's gonna be to run water through the water circuit. Mark, if you wanna hand me a cup, yep. I'll show you how to do that. So on this anima, like many of Gaja's machines, you have yep. buttons right. that correspond to our different uh, options here. In this case, the aroma strength is our selection button and that's just gonna dispense water right into the cup. 
And what that's doing is it's just priming the circuit so that the pump can pull water through anywhere that it needs to go, whether that's through the brew circuit or through the hot water spout as well. And then we're just heating up. And I mean, really, it's as easy as it gets in terms of a machine like this one. You turn it on, and then in probably a minute, you're going to be ready to brew. Yeah. So you got the little thermometer on there just letting you know. Uh, and there's just a few basic steps to go through, and we can brew our first shot. Yeah, and I mean, brewing, let's talk about brewing the first shot as it's warming up here, mm -hmm. right? Because the first few are going to be kind of weak, and why is That's that? That's right. So the machine uses something called the Gaja Adapting System. Basically, Gaja has designed the grinder to adjust on its own based on the coffee that you're using and on your grind setting. So after a couple of grind cycles, an algorithm is going to actually calibrate the grinder so that you have a more accurate dose. So your mm -hmm. first few shots may be a bit weaker. Uh, and I'd recommend maybe tossing the first cup of coffee that you brew. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see in just a moment uh, why that would be. But we're really already here. So we can put in our water hardness, but you don't have to. You can just use what the default setting is on the machine. and You'll get a descale reminder anyway. But you may want to set that. So we'll cover that in a minute. But let's say yeah. just we want to make a coffee. Well, so get some beans in there. Right? Get some beans in there and uh, we'll make a coffee. So while you do that, Mark, I'll mm -hmm. cover what we've got in terms of our interface here, just for our different selections. We have a dedicated button for espresso, espresso lungo, which is more or less just a longer extraction, steam to produce steam out of the wand, and I'll cover that in our frothing segment, and then hot water. So that's basically all the drinks that we can make. We can brew them from this menu, and we can also even program them from this menu. So. Let's go ahead, though, and just pull a shot, actually. Sure. So well, you want to use this or you want to use a clear one? I'll use an ocean one, actually, yeah. yeah. So this is the okay. new ocean cup from Not Neutral. Mark made sure to show me. <laughs> so obviously, we can pull our spouts down here. But if we want to brew an espresso, we'll see we're on our three bean strength. Just press the espresso button, and that's it. And the machine grinds and brews automatically. And we're going to have our first shot probably in uh, under 20 seconds. Yeah. Real, really quick, I mean, you don't, once, when you turn this machine on in the morning, it's going to be ready to brew, you know, as soon as it heats up. It's That's right. It's like 30-ish seconds or so. Exactly. And there's yeah. going to be a quick rinse that the machine mm -hmm. will do just to purge the spouts. Uh, that is going to be based on the amount of time that the machine was on, though. So if you're ever wondering why it rinses sometimes and why it doesn't, that's all just in the programming, and it's all based on the last use of the machine. And it's just keeping things clean for you, right? Mm -hmm. so, so like we say, that first, you know, you see this first one come out. That it's got to adapt to the coffee you're using. That's right. Figure that out. There was, you know, no coffee in there, obviously, when we started it. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a few shots to get a, uh, a really full-strength coffee out of there. That's so, right. So but get I it mean, that time. Let's grab me the clear one. Let's just yeah. pull another one back to back here, just so we can demonstrate. Should we use a shorter one? We can use yeah, a shorter one. Yeah, we'll use one, a right? shorter one, actually. You can see. So yeah. I love the Anima because it is a good machine if you're going to make taller cups of coffee. The spouts do go quite high. You've got a 60 ounce reservoir and then a 15 puck uh, drag drawer for your spent coffee pucks. So this is a good machine if you're somebody who's making frequent tall cups of coffee. Yeah. We'll run the espresso again though. And that's a ceramic burr grinder in there as well. Low friction, low heat generation. Now we're grinding whole beans fresh, but you mm -hmm. can use pre-ground, right? You can use pre-ground and that's going to use the bypass doser up here. So you would select that by using our aroma strength key before you actually make your coffee. Uh, and that's going to use this scoop as well. So one measured scoop is going to be all that you need in terms of actually making a pre-ground. And if you look at that, it's a night and day difference on our second shot okay. versus the first one. And that's really just that first shot again. To your point, there had been no coffee in there before. There's right. coffee in there now. We've got a head of creme already. That's on three beans as well. We can get up to five for our total strength. Uh, but really, it's that simple. So I'm gonna and that strength, when, this. just so everybody's clear, when you change this, you're changing the amount of coffee that's ground, right? That's right. So these yeah. beans, that corresponds to how much coffee are you grinding per drink. And this is going to be set for the two different options that we have for our espresso and our espresso lungo. And by pressing our aroma strength key, you'll see those different beans will start to fill in. So we have four, and then all the way up to five, which is the max dose on this machine. That's 11 and a half grams mm -hmm. of coffee ground fresh. If I push it one more time, we'll go to our scoop icon, and Hold that's on. going to let us know that we're using the bypass chute, okay? And so then we would just fill the doser up here with a pre-ground scoop, and then brew our coffee. So it's really that straightforward. And okay, we'll just great, take a quick great for that decaf. And 
I'm guessing, you know, if you get a couple more shots through there, we'll, it, it'll, right. it'll up in strength. So mm -hmm. do, give it, do give it like, you know, five-ish maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, it's really important just to taste the coffee as well. So this was brewed with uh, three beans of strength. So here's what I'll do. Grab me one of those nicer uh, cappuccino glasses, and we'll show you how to froth milk on this too. So we've got our coffee already. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go all the way up, though, to a maximum of our five beans here. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I'll, I'll show off programming, too, while we make sure. this. So programming on this machine is really, really simple. So I just want you to watch the screen. We'll do our Espresso Lungo button, just as an example. You push and hold this button. And then the screen's going to go into memo mode here. That's how we know that what we dispense is going to be saved for our next drink. And to confirm how much liquid we want, we're just going to press that aroma strength button again. That's the kind of our mark. true north when it comes to confirming selections is the check mark. And so it's all based on volume. So you watch the coffee that's being dispensed, already slowed down even more, especially mm -hmm. thanks mm -hmm. to that increased dose there. Uh, and really, we're getting great looking shots. And I'd say that's about as much milk as I, or espresso as I'd want. I've pushed mm -hmm. to confirm. Now, if we use the aroma strength button again, it's going to give us that much coffee again. Now, Mark, could you hand me that picture? Yeah. Because we'll go over frothing on this machine. So this has what's called a Panarello-style steam wand. This is very, uh, you know, frequently featured on super automatic espresso machines. Um, on the back side of this, you can actually see that we have an air intake hole. Uh, I'm not sure if we can get any closer to that, but it's basically yeah. a small pinhole where air is actually drawn in and injected into the milk. And what that does is it makes it much easier to produce foam. Mm -hmm. So typically, unless you really work it and give it a lot of attention, it's going to be more of a cappuccino style foam. Right. But with some practice, you can also produce foam that would be more suitable, say, for pouring a latte. But the idea is anyone can really use this machine to make good milk drinks without much effort. So to go into steaming mode, we'll go ahead and press steam. And the machine's got a lot of snow. It's doing its little heat up here, right? Because we're mm. we're gonna do we're gonna produce steam, so we're well over 212 degrees and there. And with the Panarello, you really just want to have the wand facing straight down into the pitcher. So like this, I'm not at any kind of extreme angle. We hear the pump running, the thermal blocks heating up. I don't know. I've I've got a bit of a reputation on these streams for attempting latte art here, <laughs> so I won't uh, end that trend either. But Basically what's happening is the level of foam in this is starting to rise here in the pitcher. So to stop from adding air, we would raise the pitcher up to cover the hole so that we're not injecting air anymore and we're just adding milk foam. And we're still getting a roll from that pressure as well. And I'm just going to go until it's just about too hot to hold and then press aroma strength to cut that. And so on these super autos, you do want to make sure, because you're not manually closing a valve, mm -hmm. that you leave the pitcher in position so that you don't have additional steam being dispensed when you pull it away. And so there are some bigger bubbles in here, but I'm actually mm -hmm. seeing decent looking milk. I know some people <laughs> frown on uh, tapping the pitcher, but I think that uh, in this case it's warranted. I don't think I've ever gone into a... <laughs> High-end cafe, they're not tapping and swirling, so. Tapping and swirling, yeah. It can yeah. save a lot of uh, a lot of milk. Yeah. So let's just go in. It is looking a little foamy, but, you know, really for... Hey, not too shabby. Minimal effort. I'll uh, hold that for you, huh? Thank you. You want to take a sip? Do I get this That's, one? That's uh, <laughs> looking a little dangerous there, but mm. really super simple. Yeah. And honestly, just holding that there, we are able to get a decent looking milk. Now, you do want to make sure that you purge and clean uh, from the wand, so I would recommend doing this as soon as you're done with steaming because the boiler is still going to be a little bit hot. Press the hot water button. So that's just cleaning any milk out of the wand. That's going right? to clean any milk out of the wand, that's right. And one thing to note too, because this is important uh, on a machine like this one is, if you were to pull a shot as soon as you had just steamed, Mm -hmm. That thermal block is still very, very hot. Right. So that can help too if you're noticing, oh, I froth milk and then my shots are super hot afterwards. Yeah. Well, if you cool it down with just a quick purge like that, that can help you from scalding the coffee as well. And as you saw, there was still a little bit of steam. 
until the water came out. So we're looking good now. And, and I, uh, I will mention that, you know, like on a regular basis, you're going to want to take this off and the whole thing make sure pops it's clean. right off. It's yeah. a three piece assembly. So it's actually really straightforward. Hopefully it's not too hot for you there. Uh, I could be careful, but we <laughs> yeah. have a rubber fitting right here. And then you can remove that and you'll just see milk can get around the inner circumference. We've got a little bit right there as well. And then we've still got just a bit inside the tube. So mm -hmm. we would take this, rinse this in the sink. So the purge got rid of anything that was inside the steam tube here. But obviously you do want to give these a quick rinse when you're all done with frothing to make sure that you don't have any buildup. And then if you really want to do a good job of cleaning as well, you could purchase a cleaning product like say Ernex Rinza, for example. They make mm -hmm. a milk cleaner and just soak those components so that you can get any of the milk solids broken down. So if you've been using it for you know a day or two and you forget to do that and some milk gets clogged up in there, mm -hmm. you know, not the most sanitary thing, obviously. But it can also affect your frothing performance, it right? It can affect so, the performance. So that's if you're not right. getting that air injected, that's one. That's the thing to check, right? Exactly. There, is the cleaning. So, so we've got our coffee and we've made our milk drink. So we can go into some of the more fine yeah. details now. Like let's say uh, water. So Mark, if you want to go get some water from the tap, yeah. we'll do a quick um, grab any of those. Yeah. Cups, I suppose water hardness test. But in our menu here, we don't have too many options that we can go uh, choose from. So coffee temperature, that's going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. The machine's defaulting at medium. You can go all the way up to max if you want. That's going to be a, I would say, hot but drinkable cup if you're sipping it. But right. I wouldn't go ahead and gulp that because that's going to be yeah. pretty, pretty hot. So we'll confirm that there. And if we continue going down our menu options here, we've got standby mode. So that just tells how long uh, do you want the machine to be on before it goes into the low power standby. Display contrast, that's just if you're having a hard time reading the display, you can change the contrast of the color on there. Water hardness now, we're going to go ahead and program right away. So the machine's always going to default to setting four, which would give you the most frequent descaling alerts. Right. That's why I said if you don't program it, the machine's going to take care of itself and say, hey, you better descale me. Right. So if you want to save money and time, though, get yourself mm -hmm. your strip that comes with the machine and yep. do a little test. So Mark, do the honors take here? care of that. <laughs> okay. And it's incredibly simple. So you just swipe for about a second, give it a little tap off. Now we just wait and we're going to read the number of squares that turn to a sort of a red, right? A red, yeah, or like a little orangey maybe, you know, it depends yeah. on uh, your strip. But um, So it says it's, takes about a minute, I believe is the recommendation, right? Mm -hmm. To get this fully, I can already see that, you know, we're changing on that first one. Yeah, and so the squares that change that's your hardness. So right. your green means that that's soft water, but the yellow or kind of orange color, we're looking at about one for our hardness on this. Maybe, maybe, maybe two. Maybe two if we gave it a little, little time, yeah. yeah. So if you want it to, you know, be, uh, be careful, I would say, let's go with two on this one. And then okay. we would just use our menu key to scroll down twice, press aroma strength to confirm, and that's it. So you can brew that first shot, you'll be fine, and then go in and then adjust your water hardness. Now, we also have the water filter. So as you mentioned, you can put that right in the reservoir. You want to do that because that activates the filter in the machine, so the machine will remind you when it's time to replace. And that'll change the descaling frequency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you need to descale, there's obviously a descale function programmed into the machine that you can select in the menu. And then you can go to your factory reset. So really just a very simple machine to use. I think the Anima is a really solid machine, like I said, for anybody who likes those longer coffees. Mm -hmm. You know, it was introduced, remember back in 2015? Right. So <laughs> if you remember the old Academia, which, you know, hasn't been gone for too long. No. The Anima was inspired by the design, so the chrome accenting on the front and on the edges were based yeah. on the look of the Academia. And this, and this is a lot skittier though, right? Yeah, it's, it's under, nine, under inches. nine inches. Um, you know, we brought up scale a couple times, and so if you know if you're newer to coffee machines like this or something, and you don't know what scale is, that's just deposits from the minerals that build up in that's any right. coffee machine. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, whatever heats water, if you have a lot of minerals in your water, is going to create scale. And a good rule of thumb is if you see it building up on things like kettles that you have at home yeah. or pots and pans and things like that, uh, then you have a sense that your water is going to leave some scale behind and that means it'll leave it behind inside the machine too so it's something to really take care of yeah um, and you know we have plenty of time left I'd love yeah. to demo uh, some of the other functionality and features on this machine so I mentioned 
It's a great mm -hmm. machine, let's say, for uh, somebody who likes a long coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Let's grab that tall ocean cup there. Oh, and we can make two coffees at a time as well, right? Actually, yeah, that's what I wanted to show. So I do want to reprogram my long coffee first because I think we didn't use as much liquid as I would want. But again, programming is as simple as just pushing and holding. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see that memo show up here. I mean, for, for me, the, I, you know, I love these types of machines because I like, I like a larger, you know, cup of coffee mm -hmm. as soon as I'm up, usually. That's right. Um, some, some doctors don't advise <laughs> doing that, but hey, I'm okay. Um, so I can come down in the morning, turn this on, and That's I can right. have a cup of coffee like in right around a minute or so. Exactly. You know, Between it's, it's, just it's really a quick nice. heat up and then the rapid brewing. So... I'll show off though for a sec. We're gonna get this uh, about halfway full, mm -hmm. and then we'll press aroma strength to confirm. And so again, that's just one of the key benefits of the Anima is that with the taller water reservoir, 60 ounces, mm -hmm. and the larger capacity for spent pucks, it does mean that we can make more tall drinks like this, or more times two drinks. And so a right. times two drink is basically where we push the button that we want twice. So that looks about good for me. Mm -hmm. So that's a half of this cup, more or less. And again, that pressure brewed espresso process, you do have the crema on top, the cascading foam. It really makes full cups of coffee made with a machine like this one that much richer, you know, more full bodied than just what you'd be getting out of a regular drip machine. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, if you're used to pre-ground drip coffee or, you know, maybe using, you know, some kind of capsule machine mm -hmm. where it's pre-ground, I got to tell you, you know, the flavor is just so much different. You're going to love your new Anima. That's right. right. Because the flavor is just incredible. I don't think I've ever gone, you know, somebody's drinking a lot of drip coffee at home or maybe has, you know, a capsule machine and they go to going whole beans ground fresh. They're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know? It's a totally so. different, uh, totally different flavor profile. Yeah. Let's and say we want oh, to and, and, oh, and, and real quick, right. about the two coffees, right? It's not just putting more water through. That's right. So as we'll yeah. demo, you're actually going to see it grind and brew twice. Yeah. So if we want to get back on our screen here for a minute, if I press the button two times, you'll see the 2x icon appears, and that means that we're now performing a times two brew. And sure. it's going to give us two of the volume that I just programmed. But and to your point, Mark. You got the two spouts, so, so long as the glass is a bit there. Yep. So you could either do two at a time, like Mark's demoing here, or if you have an extra tall cup, let's say, and you don't want it to be as watered down, that's where you can cut the volume a little short on your first shot and then have yep. it grind and brew a second time. Yep. That's a way to really, you know, if you really like it strong Very or strong, you like, exactly. uh, I like red eyes sometimes. You're not familiar with those. It's like a regular coffee and then a shot of espresso. That's so you right. Can do that. Yeah, you could do a tall cup and then just brew the espresso into it. Yeah. So we'll let this finish and then we'll go inside the machine so you can take a look at where all the mm -hmm. magic is happening with that brew unit. So that's the uh, internal mechanism where the coffee actually is compacted and where it brews. And so you'll take that out maybe once a week just for some basic rinsing yeah. and then put it back in the machine the next day. There's that second grind cycle. So it's not just putting more water through mm -hmm. the same coffee. You're getting that's a right. whole fresh dose of coffee in there. Exactly. So same strength if you're doing two cups. And so before we get to the uh, brew group, Brian, do we have any questions from the audience? Nothing? Nothing yet? Okay. Not yet? All right. If you have them, get in the chat there. We can help you out. They've probably all watched my video first. Yeah, so. that's right. And I will mention, you know, we do have the Coffee Cast while we're brewing here. What's that all about? That's right. So Coffee Cast is our live video uh, service that we offer to anybody pre and post sale. So if you're shopping or if you're looking for some help getting things Unboxed yourself, we'll set up your machine on our set for Coffee Cast, and we'll pair you up with a live expert who will walk through all the steps with you. So it's really a great opportunity, I think, just to kind of learn a bit more uh, and to get a closer look at the machine, obviously, while still shopping online. Nice. Okay, so we want to take a look at where stuff ends up here, right? That's right. So I'm going to have a drink. Have a little sip. Cheers. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, I think, you know, with that, we're, we're pretty much there with the, uh, you know, letting the grinder adjust. Exactly. So. You push these two tabs, and that's how we're going to slide out our front assembly here. So give me just a moment. There, there we go. go. So our spent coffee and our wastewater from the brew process all ends up inside of the drip tray here. 
You will notice that there's less cohesion on your first pucks. That's completely normal as the grinder is adapting. The drip tray runs the full length of the machine because it catches water that comes from pretty much anywhere. So there's a little buoy in the front that shows you. I'm a little bobbering. buoy, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. that floats uh, to let you know once the tray needs to be emptied. So that'll you'll start to see it kind of waving around yeah. there a little bit. Come up a little bit. We want to take a look at the yeah. brew unit here. We'll yeah. look at the brew unit as well. Slide that around. And so this is where the door opens, right on the side. And you can see the brew unit. So if you've watched any of these streams already, you'll notice this is basically the same exact brew model uh, on any of Gaja's machines. There's a tab here that you can push, spots for your fingers, and then that just slides out. Mm -hmm. And then you've got a tray underneath to catch additional drips as well. And, and I know, so you'd take this and you'd rinse this at the sink once a week? That's no right. No soap. Once a week, no soap. Don't wipe it down with a towel or anything. Just let it air dry. Uh, spots that you'd really want to look at, obviously inside the chamber here. Mm -hmm. And let's see if we can get a closer look at that. So this is where the coffee's falling in. You see this O-ring here? That's actually where our shower is located. Water flows through there. We've got the slide for the spent pucks. All these are spots you just want to give a quick rinse in the sink. And then once you've cleaned everything out, just firmly reinsert Open, the Open, i got to put unit. this back in. I did take this out because I do think it's important to show this because this is something you want to rinse as well. You'll want to rinse the little catch tray as well underneath. Because what water drains through here. Water drains through yeah. there, goes straight down into the drip tray. Right. Exactly. So there we go. we'll slide that right back in. And just firmly reinsert that. This group's yeah. a pretty sturdy beast, but uh, if you're kind of gentle with pushing it back in, you might notice, if we'll turn the machine now, mm -hmm. there are alerts on the screen that will tell you at any given moment what needs your attention. So when the brew group is removed, you'll see an icon that says remove the brew group. Now we're seeing close the door, reinsert the drip tray. So it's pretty explanatory. Uh, there are references to these icons in the manual as well. So if you ever see something you're not quite sure what to do, just take a look. We've got a little guide right in there that you can use uh, to get you all set with that. All right. And uh, I think that about does it for the Anima. Just a really great you know, value for a machine. Super easy to use. Milk drinks, tall coffees, you name it. Yeah, it's like really convenient. Again, I like, I like my coffee quick, and I, I can get it here. Uh, Brian, you got something? Okay. Uh, about how many spent pucks can the, the dump box handle? Yeah. So at max, it would be 15. And you do want to note that the pucks will vary in size based on the dose that you're using as mm -hmm. well. So if you're using, say, one bean versus five, you'll fit a little bit well, more in there. Yeah. yeah. They'll be a little bit thinner, exactly. So it's right. a difference of about five grams, right? So the largest amount of coffee is nearly double the smallest. Right. So you will see an increase in the size of the pucks based on what you're using. And yeah. again, with the bypass, too. Like, I've kind of overdosed sometimes. <laughs> but you, you do want to keep it just to one scoop, right? That's correct. You do yeah. not ever want to go with more than one scoop of the bypass. Like if you got too much in there, it, it, it may reject it. The, yeah. the machine will reject it, which is pretty sad because then yeah. you just wasted, it the wasted that coffee. Exactly. Okay. Anything more, Brian? Yeah. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, what does setting the water hardness on the machine actually do? So that's a great question. And what that does is it tells the machine how hard your water is, so based on the amount of drinks that you've made, which also factors in the volume, mm -hmm. how frequently you need to descale. <coughs> so there's an estimation of, hey, we would expect scale accumulation at this volume right. based on how hard the water is. And so, again, Gaja will default to the hardest, the hardest setting just to make sure that you're descaling frequently enough to prevent damage to the machine. But obviously, you really it's as simple as just dipping that strip in and then plugging in your water. Yeah, I mean, no reason to, you know, if you do that, then you're not going to be over, not, I mean, I don't think you really over descale, over -descale machine, yeah, but it will so. tell you to do it sooner maybe than you really need to. And I know, uh, you know, on other Gaja machines, you know, it all depends on whether you're using the filter mm -hmm. or water hardness, exactly. but, you know, it's usually, if, if you've got kind of average water, it's something in the neighborhood of 500 to 600 brew cycles between descalings. Exactly. Um, and if you were to use the filter, it, that could increase that number by, 20 to 50 percent again depends mm -hmm. on your hardness yeah, exactly. and that kind of thing so, so that's you know really the main reason why you would want to do it yeah so uh, anything more brian 
Yeah, it, would it be okay to use really dark roast coffee in this machine? Ah, very That's good question. That's a great question. Uh, so the answer is going to be no. And unfortunately, the oils on the coffee, especially if you've ever opened a bag of oily coffee, you'll see it's coating all over the inside. It's on the walls, and then mm -hmm. it's on the beans too. It'll get on your fingers. All of those oils deposit on the inside of the machine. They deposit in the hopper. They slow the feed of beans down into the grinder, which can throw off the algorithm. They gum up the inside. Yeah. All of these delicate mechanisms in there that are designed to work properly get gummed up, and then it's very difficult in some cases to actually remove those oils once they've gotten inside the machine. So yeah. uh, dark roasted coffee with a lot of oils is definitely a no-go. Yeah, I, I mean, a couple spots of oil on a bean are right. oh, okay. Um, I mean, f I, I, why don't we just show this? I mean, we're using the, our creme away, which is a That's really right. nice coffee. Um, and it does have, I mean, it's more of a medium roast, but I don't know if we can get a shot yeah. there. I'll try and help you out. There, you there go. we go. If you can see it, yeah, I mean, there's a, a spot or two of oil. Right, but it's not like the entire bean yeah. is glossy and coated with it. And that's, that's what we mean when we say dark and oily coffee. Yeah. It's coffee that's going to have that sheen that's going to be super slick, that's going to leave your hands feeling, you know, really greasy. Uh, yeah. After you've touched it. And look, I know, I know there are those who love a super dark roast coffee. Mm -hmm. um, I will just say, <laughs> usually coffee is roasted like that to cover up defects in flavor. That's right. Because you end up tasting the roast and not the bean. And so with much, espresso you know? too, a lot yeah. of times it's blended yeah. to be brewed for strong extractions that are coming from that fine grind and that high pressure. And they might use more robusta coffee, which mm -hmm. is going to have more of that boldness in general. Yeah. So you should always consult, especially with like one of our, a member of our sales team, yeah. if you have preferences for coffee because we can pair you up with something that suits your taste. Yep. All right. Well, I guess that takes care of our questions. Thanks, Brian, for helping us out back there, running the show. Nick, thank you for taking us through the Gaja Anima here. Again, if you have any more questions, you know, you can contact us. Uh, we got plenty of experts ready to help right. you out. Or you can set up a coffee cast if you'd like that free one-on-one -on -one demo with this machine or pretty much any product we carry, love that service. Mm -hmm. um, so Nick, thanks again. My pleasure. And thank you guys for watching and we'll see you back here soon for more of the best in everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.